I told you that I want to go to that festival in Sweden. No, you said it would be cool to go. Yeah, and then I got the opportunity and I decided Look, I to do it. I don't mind you going. I just wish you would have told me. That's all. Dude, she needs a therapist. You've been wanting out of this stupid relationship for like a year now. And don't forget about all of the beautiful Swedish women you'll meet in June. Okay, guys. That's not her again. Seriously? Babe, what's happening? Danny. I was so very sorry to hear about that. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Lucky Dog Podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. Today, we are discussing Midsummer 2019, directed and written by Ari Aster. Danny, played by Florence Pugh, and Christian, played by Jack Raynor, are a young American couple with a relationship on the brink of falling apart. But after a family tradition keeps them together, a grieving Danny invites herself to join Christian and his friends on a trip to a -a once-in-a-lifetime midsummer festival in a remote Swedish village. What begins as a carefree summer holiday in a land of eternal sunlight takes a sinister turn when the insular villagers invite their guests to partake in festivities that render the pastoral paradise increasingly unnerving and viscerally disturbing. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoshMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production, EliasRoshMedia.com. Midsummer. this is a movie I've been looking forward to see for quite a while now. I didn't get to see it when it first came out, so I'm finally catching up to it. Ari Aster was one of the directors last year that uh, had caught my eye specifically for the movie of his uh, his feature debut was uh, Hereditary. And Hereditary was very much a movie based around uh, grief and uh, how to, you know, dealing with it. This movie is very much around the deterioration of relationships or a single relationship. Um, Midsummer has some amazing direction. It has all of that Ari Aster flavor that you would expect. You know, he sprinkles in um, just enough story. He has this underlying unnerving layer of something's just not quite right. Um, And he is also one of those, uh, I'm, I would say, master manipulators of set piece and choreography. And every single thing you see in the frame is with reason. I don't have my uh, hereditary podcast uh, up with me right now, but I'm sure I have a line in there where um, where I talk about the precision that it takes to have, uh, you know, with the steady camera shots and all of these, um, these really intricate uh, scenes are very impressive. This movie technically is a very impressive movie. Um, I will say from the storyline, it's, it's, uh, very much on the brink of, you know, the couple of college kids go out of their country and into a new country and those that country that they happen to go in or town or wherever starts uh, to pick them off kind of one by one kind of thing. And everyone has seen um, these types of movies when it comes down to, uh, you know, horror films and whatnot. Um, but this is Ari Aster's take on it, and when it's Ari Aster's take, that means you're not going to get your little hour, 45 minutes spook, spookathon or whatever. He's going to lay out a full-on uh, narrative, at least for our main character and, you know, the main obstacles she has to go uh, overcome, um, all revolve around, uh, I would say, kind of loss. It is uh, a little bit touching on grief, but I don't think the resolution of this movie is based off of grief. It's based off of, um, the breaking of relationships, I would say. Um, if you're thinking about going to see this movie with, uh, you know, your spouse or your couple, whoever, and y'all are not doing too hot right now, I don't think this is the movie. This is not a great date movie right now. (laughs) It is, uh, it's kind of the exact opposite of a date movie. So, 
uh, keep that in mind if you were thinking about having this as a you know scary movie fun fun time. It's not really one of those. Uh, this movie is going to get compared to a movie that was I think made about 10 years ago with uh, Nick Cage. I, I don't want to say it yet until the spoiler section, but it goes into that uh, wild, crazy territory. Um, so I, I, I will touch on what movie I'm specifically talking about. I will say the story from uh, the script standpoint, it's not incredibly thick. But the things they say are very important. And so he's not, you know, two and a half hours. There's not tons of dialogue for all of that. A lot of it is visual storytelling and just watching things happen and ceremonies go down and kind of absorbing it and watching the reactions of it. The thing is, the uh, the story... It, well, I mean, Ari Aster's always been more of a visual storyteller when it comes down to it, and he hasn't been as... Uh, in depth of a writer. I had that problem with Hereditary. I felt like there were some unresolved plot lines in Hereditary. Um, the only, some of the main things I, uh, like I said, direction, the lighting, the cinematography, all of the technical work in uh, both Hereditary and Midsummer have been very, uh, uh, uh I've been impressive to say the least. It's it's uh, he's a director that you want to see create more and more work because he's such a unique uh, filmmaker. I'm glad A24 is giving him the opportunity to do this. I, as a matter of fact, I heard that he was filming Midsummer right as Hereditary was being released, so he didn't even really get to see how Hereditary did in the states to uh, to a degree, um, and the critical um, reception to it. So. Um, which honestly, I think would have been a little bit beneficial, so we could have uh, edited this film just a tad bit. Um, the use of characters of color in 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 a way is uh, it's probably something I'm gonna have to leave for the spoiler section. But overall, mixed feelings about it. It's it's a little bit sticky of a situation. Um, Main characters, I thought all of the main characters did an excellent job. Uh, uh, main character who played, uh, what was her name? Uh, Florence Pugh, Danny played, uh, she was in uh, In the Time It Takes to Get There. That's a short comedy. Um, Fighting with My Family, I believe that was a movie. Uh, the Little Drummer Girl, I've heard that decent things about that. Outlaw King, um, that was on Netflix. The Commuter with... Uh, Liam Neeson, and uh, a couple of other great uh, pieces of media. Jack Raynor was uh, on Strange Angel, Midsummer, obviously. Uh, uh, Mowgli on Netflix, On the Basis of Sex. Ken, that one movie that didn't do too hot. Um, Electric Dreams and Detroit. So it looks like we do have a couple people from the movie Detroit on here. Um, we also have uh, Wilhelm Balgreen, who was Pele, who was the uh, the Swedish guy that, or he played a Swedish guy, and he was the Swedish friend of the group that brought them to uh, the Midsummer Festival. Um, he really is a newer actor. I thought he did pretty good. Um, he's in a new uh, HBO special or or show. I can't tell if it's a it was a comedy called uh, Gosta. Um, he hasn't been in too much. William Jackson Harper, who plays Josh, um, he has been in uh, Jack Ryan, Midsummer, Lost Holiday, The Good Place, We Win, the, They Remain, The Root of Happiness. That's a short. Um, Patterson, Deadbeat. He's been in a ton of stuff. Uh, Black Blacklist, ton, a lot of uh, TV shows. It looks like um, Will Poulter, one of my favorite actors out this. Uh, more recently, he, he was most recently on uh, Black Mirror Bandersnatch not too long ago. Um, but he's going to be on something called Bane. Uh, he's been in uh, The Little Stranger, Maze Runner, Detroit, War Machine, and uh, among many other things. Uh, you know, he's in The Revenant and uh, uh, War of the Millers and other things. Um, yeah, so th those are our main characters that uh, fulfill our cast and um, 
our supporting cast, and I thought the majority of it was excellent. I will say I was very impressed with the detailed work in this, um, the detail work in the uh, set design and just the choreography as a whole. I thought everything was – it's it's a movie that is going to serve well from watching it again. You know, a rewatch is going to be phenomenal for this. The thing is I don't think a lot of people are going to want to rewatch this. My uh, – let me see. One issue I had with uh, the overall story art was that I actually have seen the majority of what happens in this movie in other television shows. This is when it this is what comes down to I don't know what the the actual word would be called, but when a, a critic sees uh, too many TVs or t- television movies or too many movies, I don't know if that's possible to see too many. But if you see something done in another movie or in another television show, it's not quite as shocking to see it for the second time in uh, in a separate television or a separate movie. So. Um, there are elements that happen in this movie that I've seen in other other uh, really intense television shows, shows we've actually podcasted about, that um, kind of took away from the umph of this movie. So that that's one thing. It, it does feel very much like they were trying to go for some shock value in a lot of the scenes, a lot of the scary, uh, more visceral, violent scenes. Um trying to get a reaction out of the audience. And, you know, it's shocking for shocking sake, but it's just at some point you're like, mm, I've seen this before. I, you know, it, it, you know, it's like when when you go through something the first time, it's always a little bit scary because you don't know what to expect. But once you've seen it, once you've dealt with it, it's not nearly as intense. So the second time. So, um uh, Yeah, let me hop into the spoiler section for Midsummer, starting right now. Uh, We are in the Midsummer. It's uh, it's actually closer to the end of summer now that I'm recording this. Um, Let me see what this budget was done. I was very impressed by the budget of Midsummer um, for how much they were doing with it. Let me see. Midsummer budget. Oh, wow. I'm seeing eight million dollars on on Midsummer as compared to Hereditary. Hereditary budget. What was the budget on that? Let's see. Oh wow! So he's gone down in budget. He went from Hereditary was a ten million dollar budget, and Midsummer was an eight million dollar budget. That's very interesting. Normally, these types of directors go up in budget. Um. So we're in the spoiler section. So the movie that I was discussing was, uh, I think it was the 2006 Wicker Man, um, featuring, yeah, Nick Cage, that was directed by uh, Neil Laboot. Um, yeah, that that movie has a very similar, you know, uh, group or guy goes to an island or a cult or something like that, and they kind of t- they end up electing him to be the the sacrifice kind of thing. Um, not going to tell you whether he lives or not, but um, in this movie, you know what happens. Uh, I the thing about this movie was it. Um, David Chen on the slash film cast said it best. It starts out as one movie and ends as another, in a way that doesn't feel unsatisfying for me personally, but sometimes the way that they're trying to correlate grief and sometimes the way they're trying to correlate this uh, this breakup that's happening between this uh, boyfriend-girlfriend is, uh, is a little bit extreme, I would say. Like, undoubtedly, the, the relationship between the two main characters is established at the beginning as being kind of toxic and not that great, and they should probably, uh, you know, leave it. However, they're both in situations, her more or less, that she really needs somebody stable in her life. And um, they're kind of portraying her sister as having this uh, 
uh, bipolar disorder, which ends up she goes her sister goes and kills her folks, which ultimately doesn't really feel like it comes back around into the plot for me personally. I understand there were supposed to be similarities to when everyone is burning at the end of the movie in this uh, this ritual. Um, that she's watching, that Danny is watching her boyfriend burn in, and all of his friends are burning in there as well. And it's pretty much the only time we see her smile, I felt like, throughout the whole movie, that, um, you know, she's just, uh, she's very distraught the majority of the movie, and it felt like, I felt like they were trying to correlate what her boyfriend did to what her sister and what her folks had to endure and I really was not understanding nor connecting with that idea so a couple times throughout the the, sh- the show specifically the editing is very specific to the point where the blocking of the, sorry the blocking in the editing show that one scene where uh, her boyfriend is lured, and after they're both drugged, this is probably around the hour 50 mark or something like that, right when things start to go haywire. Um, I mean, things are pretty much haywire the whole time, but it's the last day, I guess, um, that they're separated, and the the boyfriend character just, overall, I felt like he was acting in a way that he almost felt complicit with what happened to the group. He kept saying, oh, the group's fine. They'll be good. They're this, they're that. Like, dude, your group is dwindling one by one. And you're finding hair in your food. You're finding uh, what possibly, they possibly could have been eating bodies, it looked like. I I wasn't exactly sure about, like, uh, what they were eating. It felt very much like they there was a chance that they were cannibals and uh jack at one point uh you know pulls a hair out of his i don't know pie or whatever the hell it is and they they say it's a pube or something i was like, I was like why would you continue eating this I mean, why would you even continue staying at any of this I, the whole time i was just like y'all need to get the buck out i felt like there was some reason that they just stayed for whatever reason i don't i don't really know exactly um I felt like Josh, uh, William Har- William Jackson Harper's character, was like the only character that was really acting how I would be acting. Um, as soon as they get there, they take some uh, they take some mushroom uh, mushrooms of some sort or acid, drop acid or some sort. I'm I've never done any of that, but from what I heard is the uh, the trip scenes in this are actually quite. Uh, true to real life you you see flowers moving that are on your body or uh you know you see grass growing from your hand or just just insane shit just random shit i couldn't confirm this never done it myself but this is what i heard um so yeah the uh one of the overarching problems with uh the movie for me i didn't give a shit about the relationship the ari aster did an insane job of showing how bad this relationship had gone to shit, but he did not show how important the relationship was before. So when we see her uh, roasting her boyfriend on an open flame in a bear costume, we don't really... Me personally, I'm like, fuck him. I didn't like the guy, and I didn't like his friends. You know, I was just like, uh, you know what? She, she saw what you were doing. You, I mean, drugged up or not, you were over with... Uh, 12 women singing hallelujah or whatever in that church thing having the little sex orgy thing or it wasn't really an orgy but it was some weird sexual cult thing and um and to have his girlfriend see that yeah that's probably about right you know she's gonna probably be really fucking pissed i'm not sure if he's gonna get burned in a bear costume for it but uh at that point she doesn't give a fuck she's in a place where it's you know it's basically the wild, wild west. They can put you in a bear costume. They can, uh, they can spread you open like that first guy. Uh, okay. Oh, oh. Let me talk about that. Uh, uh, that show that I watched. This is minor, minor spoilers for the show Hannibal. So if you're not interested in Hannibal, or uh, the show Hannibal that was on NBC for a while, we we podcasted it. But there are similarities to this movie that Hannibal did. Hannibal. 
Hannibal did, I don't know, what was it, over five years ago. And honestly, in Hannibal, it was scarier. Maybe the effects weren't as good, but it was scarier. I was like, what the fuck? So when we see this um, this one guy, the first guy that is strung up in the blood angel sacrifice uh, ritual or whatever, where they're removing his lungs from the back of from his back. I w- I was in shock, but if I had if I hadn't seen that before, I think I would my jaw would be on the floor. I ab- I actually do have the recording of when I first saw that uh, the blood angel sacrifice. There there's a, a episode on Hannibal where they sort of cover that, and uh, Kelly and I were like, oh my gosh. This is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. And seeing it here, it was, you know, uh, disturbing in a way. But after seeing it the first time, I mean, the first time, you're just like, what kind of sick person or sick thing does this? It, 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 doesn't, even, it, it doesn't feel like it applies to being human at that point because the, the person is so terribly mutilated and whatnot. It's just like, oh, my gosh. I was... The first time I saw that sacrifice on uh, on television, I was like, this is sickening. I never want to watch anything like this again. Seeing it now, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure people were pretty uh, terrified and horrified or whatever from that scene. For me personally, um, after the first time, I was like, yeah, whatever, I've seen this. Um, but other than that, uh, and the bear costume. Um, I know this is sort of spoilery for... Uh, Hannibal as well, so you know if you want to bear with me, you can you can skip ahead or whatever. But I'm I want to talk about the similarities between this. There's a fucking bear costume in Hannibal. Um, my guess is Ari Aster has seen all of Hannibal, and I don't I don't know exactly what the correlations are. I think in this movie the bear symbolizes kind of rebirth, or he symbolizes the the burning of this bear is supposed to be the symbol of uh, getting rid of hate and evil kind of thing, getting rid of the other. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I don't a hundred percent get what the movie's symbol is symbolism was because I think it has a couple of, uh, interpretations probably. I need to listen to a couple more podcasts and maybe some behind the scenes with Ari Aster just to hear what his take is on it. But, um, yeah, overall, um, I would have had a much more visceral reaction if I hadn't seen those sacrifices made before. And uh, I gave a shit about the relationship. So, because uh, because I had seen that, it wasn't as... A gut punch for me, seeing, uh, you know, the bear, seeing the the blood angel, seeing some of these sacrifices. Um, but yeah, it was uncomfortable. I think it was probably scarier than Hereditary, although Hereditary just had like a lot more doom and gloom. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what else Ari Aster puts out. I know regardless of uh, the last two movies, I think this dude's an excellent director and he knows how to uh, put you in a time and a place or, uh, you know, uh, basically I was thinking at the end of this, I was like, I need to look this place up so I know never to fucking visit because I feel like I had just watched one of those uh, – Movies like, uh, I, I can't remember, you know, the typical white teenagers go to uh, a, a foreign country. Normally it's in like Latin America or somewhere that is, got, you know, uh, or in Africa or somewhere where they have uh, tribes of people or something like that. They aren't quite, they're more of a third world status, more of a cult son kind of thing and when you see them they're like they're tortured and those people are all you know kind of taken out by one by one it felt kind of like that except this is like older folks and it's more of a pagan cult community i guess and uh i don't know there was just this uh i 
it was weird kind of seeing all of these uh all of these Swedish people, I don't know, all in unison. They're all okay with these crazy sex sexual devi- deviancies, all of these uh uh, weird trip scenes, all of these weird uh, sacrifices. It's it's for me personally one of the scariest things is seeing something going horribly wrong, and everybody in the room is acting like it's normal. That's one of the scariest things for me. Uh, watching on television sometimes, um, the the way that the people were were kind of mimicking the emotions of our main character, um, Danny was very interesting. I, I'd never seen anything like that on television or on film. Um, that was almost more horrifying than sitting, seeing the actual uh, the bear costume slash uh, blood angel. Um, I wanted a little bit more explanation on those, I guess. I, I, maybe I need to go back and look at those again. But, uh, yeah, the uh, Will Poulter's character gets his fucking face taken off. I don't know. Uh, just some crazy shit. Um, yeah, uh, oh, the place of community, there was, a, when I was listening to the Slash Film cast on their Midsummer review, um, one of their guests on their, what was her name, I'll find, I'll find out her name in a second, um, Valley Complex, on the, uh, she was a guest on the Slash Film cast, talks about the uh the sense of community that the midsummer uh festival is bringing toward our main character Danny and that she's the only one that doesn't question all of their crazy practices and um all of their you know rituals and traditions and whatnot generally um but by the end she's smiling and she's been crowned may queen and all of that and above it's just kind of like um okay uh so, from my perspective, we're seeing Danny, who's pretty much lost at the beginning of the movie, and she's consoling in her boyfriend. The only thing she can do is uh, is basically cry because her sister and folks are dead, her family's gone, and uh, the only person that's really trying to relate to her is uh, the Swedish guy that is his buddy or his so-called buddy. Um, let me see, Pele. And he just keeps on asking, you know, if, if she feels like um, Christian is a real provider. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it seemed fairly obvious he was interested in Danny the entire time. Christian was not interested in Danny the majority of the time. It just would have helped a lot better if we would have gotten to see more um, backstory, I guess, a little bit. Even like one or two scenes, or, or just a short montage of them having a deterioration of a, a relationship would have been a lot easier just to see so that we can see that they actually were compatible at one point. So, uh, yeah, I uh, I enjoyed uh, Midsummer for the direction it, it brought, the, the detail and the background, the the crazy trip scenes, the, the overall feel was... Um, I don't know. It was eerie to say the least. And uh, the, my only thing is, I probably would have acted way more like, "What the fuck's going on? Where the fuck are my friends? I need a cell phone. You know, I I need to get out of here." <laughs> so, thank you for listening to the Lucky Dog Podcast. Check out all the Lucky Dog Podcast links down below. PayPal dot me slash Lucky Dog Podcast for donations, comments, questions, concerns. Check all the show notes below. The Lucky Dog Podcast at gmail.com. Twitter at Lucky Dog Podcast. Twitter, uh, sorry, Facebook group is available down there. Uh, in the show notes, Twitch, twitch.tv slash Lucky Dog Podcast. Instagram, check out um, the link below for that. So thank you for listening to the Lucky Dog Podcast and take it easy. I was most excited for you to come. couple things I forgot to add to the podcast was the treatment of people of color in this. They were knocked off early in this movie. I thought that they could have done a little bit better of a job just kind of uh, elaborating on that. It did seem like this cult was sort of uh, white-leaning in in a way, Um, and they did obviously choose very uh, uh, blonde hair, blue-eyed, 
uh, individual that looked like themselves and pretty much fucked up everybody of the co- people of color. I was, I was like, eh, you know, this is not that great from that perspective. Another perspective was the uh, treatment of the bipolar sister. It seemed that that was, uh, uh, they just kind of call her bipolar and she might have problems and that type of and, and the guys kind of try to rationalize it, saying, you know, this is the type of shit that she goes through. But then eventually, you know, we know what the sister does and what it, you know, the implications of it. So it's kind of problematic in a way that I don't know if they just didn't have enough time to explore or what. Um, the other thing was, oh, yeah, the uh, the almost like the storyboards they had basically throughout the entire uh movie the the detail in this movie it cannot be understated enough he uh he, the small things such as showing basically the entire story through storyboard on these little plaques that everyone is looking at when they first arrive it, it's it's an, it's pretty trippy and they're they're really detailed in a way that they almost look like they need a printer to do that instead of what they were you know hand drawn or whatever the fuck but um they still looked very uh you uh eye capturing I guess and it was small visual things like that that really told the story it was the background uh paintings in the room where the bear and the girl are in one of the first shots I thought that was a uh interesting shot I'm not exactly sure if that I, I guess it's kind of supposed to be mimic the last few shots um, with the, you know, her boyfriend in the bear costume burning and stuff like that. I sort of, and just, I, I'm still learning a little bit. I'm going to put a, a, a link in the show notes that has the slash film cast with Ari Aster and their spoiler review, just some more in-depth stuff that I really thought was interesting. And I think, uh, if you like this podcast, you might find that interesting as well. Um, also just small things like, uh, Apparently, in, in, in what, what I just said, the uh, podcast with Ari Aster, one of the Slash Film uh, individuals asked him about the um, the perspective of this movie and that from many female perspectives or from the girlfriend perspective um, versus the boyfriend perspective, some of the men that watch this movie might see themselves kind of reflected in this uh, movie for for good or for bad. I mean... Um, I certainly saw small things. I was like, oh gosh, you know, it's just like, um, small things like the boyfriend not watching the girlfriend, you know, get crowned or do the dance or, you know, kind of paying attention to her when it really counts. And you see her kind of looking over to her boyfriend, trying to get, you know, reassurance and just to kind of get his attention, honestly, in some points. And so small things like that, I thought were very important that, were uh, shown in the movie, and I thought that was brilliant. Apparently, there's a hidden director's cut that Ari Aster was talking about in that interview I just spoke about that might be getting released this week, actually, um, the week of September, I believe, um, first week of September. So, uh, I, I, I honestly, the more I learn about this movie, the more I want to see it again. It's, uh, like I said, it's a movie that really has... A um, lot of perspectives, a lot of hidden, deep meaning in this, uh, apparently, in this film. Apparently, Ari Aster was going through a breakup while he was making this film. I was like, oh my goodness. So, uh, like I said, the two different perspectives, the boyfriend perspective versus the girlfriend perspective. Uh, Ari Aster thinks that this is very much a wish fulfillment from the girlfriend's perspective. And I actually remember, uh, you know, uh, telling Kelly, I was like... Uh, you know, th- th- this is what happens at the end of the movie. She wanted, she, she said she wasn't going to watch it. So I told her she was, a, and I told her at the very end, you know, uh, the girlfriend's smiling, watching this whole thing go down. It kind of puts a smirk on and, uh, she's like, good. And I was like, okay. So there is a perspective in this movie that there is this hidden layer of dark comedy in a way, almost to a wish fulfillment perspective that I found very interesting i want to go back and i want to go check out some some ratings for this movie mostly because i think there's a lot of uh hidden things or hidden meanings in this uh 
in this film and everyone's going to get a different perspective. I mean, even from like the, 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 uh, regular audience perspective or something like that, you know, audiences that aren't terribly into, uh, these types of movies, these type of, uh, slow burn kind of auteur type horror movies, not your typical, you know, scare, um, not your, uh, jump scares kind of shit. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of different, uh, a lot of different perspectives. So, uh, let me see if I can find some. Okay, 7 out of 10 on IMDb. This movie was a trip by Palace, uh, Palestine, uh, Royal. I'm not sure how, how about the movie had me on the edge. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm not sure how about, how but the movie had, oh, sorry. I I don't know why I can't speak. I'm not sure how, but the movie had me on edge the entire time. You have to enjoy the cinematography to really enjoy this movie. I left the movie like I just came down from a high. The whole thing felt like a bad trip afterwards. I was pleased and not at the same time, but I think that's how we're meant to feel. It's a good change from superhero movies and terribly made horror movies. Interesting. Um... 9 out of 10, Bizarre But Great, Matt by Matt DeMar. Just watch the movie. Don't read or watch anything about it beforehand. Bef- bizarre But Great. Okay. Whoa, that's a long one. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can find a female. Let me see. Daniel, just a replicant. Seagir. I guess there's a lot of men on imdb that are doing the majority of these nancy okay nancy okay four to ten just couldn't get behind this nancy quip film review it seems exactly like my kind of thing as this is my kind of folk horror but just but it just felt like there was something missing the layers of hereditary weren't there and poor pew main character Just spent two and a half hours crying and wailing, which is a waste of her talents, too. Pretty disappointed after all the hype and my own excitement for this film. Wow, this person, uh, Nancy, was not feeling uh, Midsommar. Let's see. Let's see if I can get another Jesse. I wonder, I'm assuming this is a Jesse. I don't don't know. I I think it's a man. Can't go by it. Let's see if we can find another female. Um, Mr. Q, Lips and Barack, E Reviews, Violin Joe, no, no, bro, it's kind of hard to tell, okay, Bella, uh, Bella Senorita, 1 out of 10, strongly not recommended, the most creepy, disturbing, and sick movie, above all, it is pointless and has no story, I wish I could just unsee it, wow, Bella is not <laughs> happy with that. I, uh, I wonder if I can find another one. Um, oh wow, these these are pretty bad. Uh, Margaret, okay, two out of ten. You need to show up drunk or high to enjoy. What the hell did I just watch? Horror movie? Question mark. Not at all. Long slash boring. Definitely, I was looking forward to watch this movie. Not sure why, but boy, I would wish I would have rather gone to the dentist or gotten a pap smear instead. Not certain why so many people enjoyed it. I did not. I am not a fan of psychological horror movies. Off to the dentist I go. Well, I mean, Margaret, it's a psychological horror film. I don't know if you're, you're going to sit there for two and a half hours and complain about watching a psychological horror film. It's you, you. you did you see Hereditary? I mean... I don't know. I just feel like maybe it was slightly mismarketed a little bit to make it seem like it was going to be like a bing, boom, boom. But it very much is a slow burn, but not like in a way that I didn't feel like I was I was not on pins and needles the whole time. It seems like she just wanted, you know, something a little bit that just, you know, not quite as intricate and that made you think is hard i guess i don't know it's easy to say you want a a movie that's slightly dumbed down so that it's just it's obvious who the good guy who the bad guy is but i thought that it's uh this is an interesting take on a horror film and it's not just 
you know, there's a scary thing in the shadows and you got to defeat it by, you know, the power of love or something like that. Um, I, I, we very much like those movies, but, um, I, I guess you could just say there's a certain audience for this. Ice Cream Benjamin Elliot. 10 out of 10. Traumatic, surreal, bizarre masterpiece. I'll start this off with a warning. If you're a mainstream horror fan, you'll not like this. It is not The Conjuring. It does not have jump scares. It is a slow movie. It's not scary in a way that most horror films are scary. It doesn't frighten you. It felt traumatic. It, this is an artsy movie for sure. If you don't like that, don't see it. Um, yeah, he should be telling that to What's-Her-Face, to whatever... Uh, lady before um florence Pugh is absolutely phenomenal she provides the heart of the film and what's keeps in what keeps the audience emotionally invested in such a disturbing horror disturbing film it's one of the greatest horror performances that i've ever seen the cinematography is simply gorgeous and i've never seen a film look so gory and grotesque yet absolutely beautiful at the same time it's some of the best cinematography i've seen in years the art direction is phenomenal in providing us with a floral candy colored nightmare world and ari aster's screenplay and direction is what makes this special and separates it from other horror pieces it's slow methodical and eerie but the characters are psychological and deep the dialogue is real and colorful the plot is surreal and disturbing, and he lets the scares crawl at you as opposing to jump at you. I like that. He allows you to see what happened, process it, feel the shock of what's about to happen, and then still shock you even more when it happens. This film will be divisive. I have no doubt that many people here will hate this. However, while this is a challenging film, it's also a great film. Halfway through, a character says something along the lines was along the lines of that was so messed up, but I'm trying to keep an open mind. I suggest that audiences take that advice. PSA: This movie is extremely violent, bloody, and gory. It's pretty horrifying, and it could have stuff that is triggering. Wow! So uh, this guy really was was feeling it. It's interesting how how difficult it was to find a. a a female on the IMDb that was actually feeling this movie, which was interesting because the majority of podcasts I was listening to, the females, most of the critics as a whole, all really enjoyed this movie. And uh, I generally enjoy this movie. I'd say it's about 7 out of 10. Might have to go back. Um, but yeah, I. <laughs> someone says this might kill... Sweden's tourism industry. I'm, I'm sure it's not helping it uh, for certain people. But anyways, yes, uh, it, it's quite a movie. Um, anything else? Oh, I did talk about the Americans kind of exploring a country or island outside of them. I, I think I strictly said uh, Latin America or Africa, but I, I distinctly remember Hostel um, the Eli Roth movie, I'm pretty sure that happens in Europe, so evidently it's just that it's one of those cliche horror movies with the uh, Americans leaving uh, America and uh, or the United States and, uh, <laughs> and going somewhere else and getting screwed. So um, I did find it very interesting, the, the approach of the way this film specifically handles that, and it's... Uh, it's um, done at a, a pretty high high degree, and uh, apparently the pre-production and po uh, and production schedule was pretty vigorous for this, um, given what Ari Aster was saying in his inter in his interview. So, um, I'll add that interview link in the show notes. So, thank you for listening, and take it easy.